Hey guys, uh, I want to make this video to show you some items that I'm actually adding to my bob bag. Um, some were suggestions, uh, such as underneath here the ponchos, um, and some were items I already planning on putting in there. Uh, I do appreciate, you know, in my bob bag videos, all the comments and people do make great suggestions on different items. And there's probably, God, you can, you could probably make four or five of those bags packed with good things to carry. It really just depends on your situation, where you are, what you do, uh, that makes what combinations are good for you. Again, personalizing your kit for your application. Um, so I do appreciate all suggestions that some of the items are, are great additions. Uh, maybe I don't have them or I just choose not to carry them for whatever reason. Uh, but I did want to make this video again to show you some of the uh, additions I'm going to make to my Bob bag. Um, some of the stuff actually came from my camping bag. Uh, I haven't camped uh, in a while now. And I was actually going through my camp bag to see if I had any, you know, food that I had to get rid of or anything like that. Uh, and I actually took some of those items and I decided to just carry them in my bob bag so they're always with me. Uh, first thing I'll talk about here um, is the knife. Uh, switching out my Morris to a new model here. Um, I've talked about this more in the past. I actually have a video on it. Uh, it's just better than the other one. I currently carry the clipper, as you saw there. Uh, the main reason I like this more is the handle... It's a little bit more comfortable. You have a little bit more blade here as opposed to the 4-inch blade. I think this is a 5-inch or perhaps 4.5, but it is a longer blade. Um, and what I really like about this, though, is the sheath. The sheath, the one hit I, that Morris take is they have usually have some pretty low-end low, low end sheaths. Uh, the knives themselves are a great value, but you can't ask for everything for 10 bucks, you know. Uh, but this one, this is a little bit more expensive. I think these are like $25. Um, but the sheath I absolutely love. Very simplistic. Uh, I don't have to worry about which way I put them in. You know, it's going to fit in either direction. Very simple leather um, uh, loop here for belt carry. It does uh, hold some of the handle here, as you can see. So it's a deep carry sheath. So I don't have to worry about it, you know, falling out or anything. Um, so I am just replacing my, my beater Mora clipper with this Mora here. So that's one thing I'm going to do. Another thing is I just got some stuff from Countycom. Uh, my package came in, and of course, yes, I will have <laughs> plenty of uh, reviews on different products, some awesome stuff, uh, and this is one of those products. Um, these are these gloves. I actually forget the, the name. The brand here says G-Tech, as you can see. Um, very comfortable. I have not actually used these yet, but putting them on, and I'll put one on for you right here. Let me get my right one. Uh, it's super, super comfortable. You know, the whole, whole glove itself stretches, the, um, you know, as well as the, the band here. Roll up my sleeve for a second. Very comfortable, very solid fit. And what I really like about this glove is that I can do minute work with this. It's not like uh, a lot of different work gloves where you have big fat fingertips here and it's cumbersome and you can't really hold small screws and stuff like that. This really is very comfortable, all, all stretchy material, kind of rubberized uh, on the bottom side here so you do have more grip on things. I absolutely love it. And of course it does, you know, it's going to stretch and uh, fit everyone. It is kind of, I think, a one-size-fits-all. Uh, again, I have kind of large hands, but not super-duper large. Uh, fits perfect. Very comfortable. So I'm going to start carrying these gloves uh, in my bag as well. Again, more options. Um, I already have a couple pairs of gloves, but they're for winter. I don't really have work gloves in there, except for those orange ones. But these will definitely take more of a beating uh, than those orange winter gloves. Uh, next thing. I want to talk about also from County Com is a signal mirror. Now this is a great setup and a very reasonable price uh, over at County Com. Just got this today, and what's really cool about these comes with its own little carrying case, which is by, by the way you can use for anything you want. If you uh, you want to carry the, the mirror separate, it comes just like this with the lanyard and the bag. So if you wanted to, you can carry this case. Uh, excuse me, you can carry the the mirror in this bag and then use this for something else if you wanted to. You always have the option. Um, I'll keep this in the bag like this just to keep the mirror completely clean. Uh, what's great about this is that it's a perfect signaling device. And, of course, the, all the instructions are on the back here. Just totally ideal uh, to use. Um, if you do need to, in an emergency situation, uh, you know, signal uh, maybe a boat or a plane, depending on where you are. You know, any, any person out there that may, may be able to uh, help you or rescue you. Um, but for city use, it's also just a mirror. <laughs> I mean, there's a hundred different reasons you can use a mirror, whether you're looking behind something or maybe just looking at yourself just to, uh, 
you know, uh, clean up a little bit, you know, before maybe a meeting or a date or something like that. So not only is it an emergency uh, piece of gear, but it's also just a regular mirror. It's just good to have a mirror sometimes, you know. Um, so that's something I'm also adding to my kit. Fantastic item. Uh, let's see, since I'm talking about Countycom stuff, I'll show you the other thing I got from Countycom. Uh, I have a sewing kit, but I decided to get some uh, Kevlar thread from them. This is genuine Kevlar thread, black. Um, just super, super strong stuff. Uh, definitely outdoes any thread you can <laughs> you could buy at the dollar store or even your craft shops. I mean, this thing, if you have uh, some heavy-duty military gear that's just taken a, really a lot of abuse over the years and you need something to sew it up, this is the stuff. Uh, this is going to definitely outdo any thread you're going to buy anywhere else. Uh, like I said, it's uh, actual Kevlar. So very heavy duty. Um, again, if you need to patch up a bag or maybe your clothing, you know, in my case, uh, I'll probably use this. I have a couple uh, tears where my cargo pants, the pockets, you know, sometimes I load the pockets up a little bit, too much weight, and it, it kind of rips the corners a little bit. So I'll use this to uh, patch that up. So I'm going to keep this in my bag as well. So not only do I have an extremely strong thread, but now I have extra thread as well. Um, also, I have a light my fire spork. Very simple. Um, again, not really a big necessity if you're in a city area. Uh, again, these these items, like the mirror is multi-purpose. You can have this in a city or you know a, a rural area because you can use it as just a mirror or as a um, you know emergency tool. A spork. If you're in like a city environment, you don't necessarily need to carry a utensil around uh, wherever you're eating. Most likely, there's going to be utensils, but you just never know. I mean, like I said, I'm, sometimes I'm out in the middle of nowhere, and sometimes I'm in a city-type environment. So I have I have gear for both uh, both types of places. So I do have that just in case, of course, spoon on one side, fork on the other. There is a serrated portion here uh, that's meant to be used like a knife, but it's pretty much useless. But that's fine because I always carry extra blades I can always use for a uh, knife as a... Uh, as a utensil, but um, good to have that. Also, this is one of the suggestions that someone gave me: uh, some ponchos. I've actually, I have ponchos in a separate bag in my car. I keep a separate bag. Maybe I'll do a video on it. Uh, actually, someone uh, who I subscribe to just put a video, a video up on this. But I keep a, a bag in my vehicle at all times, um, and it does change depending on the season. This is one of those items I keep in the car no matter what, whether it's in my bob bag or not. But I'm going to add these to my bob bag just so they go with me wherever I go. Uh, just a regular old run-of-the-mill ponchos. You can get these for a dollar. Walmart, Kmart, all, all kinds of places sell it. Um, I have a yellow one here and a black one. The reason I'm carrying two is because nine out of ten times I'm usually with someone, uh, if not multiple people, so I do want to uh, have one for someone else too. Let's say a car breaks down and I'm with someone else. Um, at least I have something for them as well. You know, I hate to, <laughs> hate to break out my bag and just have stuff for me and then see them walking in the rain. Uh, but anyway, some ponchos are always good to have. Very cheap item and somewhat compact, too. Um, then I have here, I have a compass. Very simple, cheap compass. I got this from, I believe, one of my orders with Deal Extreme. Um, compasses are great items to have, but you have to familiarize yourself with them. Uh, there was one person I was talking to, and this was actually uh, in person. And I was talking about some um, survival-type stuff and different gear. And they were saying how they carry a compass. Um... And I kind of asked them a couple basic questions, and they, they didn't know what I was talking about. So what my point here is that if you carry a compass, that's great. But the only way a compass is going to help you is if, A, you know how to use it. Uh, also, if you're venturing off into the woods, you have to know where you're coming from. You have to know some bearings and stuff like that. It's not something anyone could just pick up and bring into the woods and be able to be you know rescue themselves. If you don't know where you're coming from or where you're going... You know, what difference does it make, you know, if you get lost and you say, okay, well, that's north. Well, do you want to head north? You know, are you heading south? So you just, like I said, a compass is great to have if you know how to use it and you are uh, keeping information like that in mind when you're venturing off into the wild. Um, always good to have. Again, not a, you don't need a compass for a city necessarily. Uh, however, um, as I said in one of my other videos, I was uh, driving with my grandfather and we were on a road, you know, we weren't like in the middle of the woods, but we were lost. And we knew what direction the highway was, so a regular compass would be good in that application as well. Keep in mind, too, when you're using a compass, um, if you're in a vehicle, you know, or if you buy any kind of uh, computer or anything like that, it will kind of skew your reading because of the uh, magnetic pull and uh, electronics. So just also something to keep in mind. Um, another thing I carry here is actually a copy, a pocket version of the uh, SAS Survival Guide. 
Um, there's a couple of these out there, actually own the full size version. And when I was at, last time I was at Border Bookstore, I decided to get a pocket version for my camp bag. Um, I've read through this at least once, but it's always good to have a reference guide with you. You know, if you ever get caught doing something uh, and you, you kind of forget, or if you're under a lot of pressure and, you know, in a real survival situation, you might be freaking out, you know. And uh, you might forget some of the simplest things that you know. So it's always good to have a reference guide. This is very compact, uh, can fit in most people's bags. Um, it's definitely a great book to look at, whether you have the pocket version or the full size. I definitely suggest it. Uh, if nothing else, uh, in the past I've actually broken this out because I was stuck somewhere, like in a waiting room uh, not too long ago. I was at a, um, uh, actually, it was kind of long ago, it was a couple months. But um, if you're stuck somewhere where you're in a waiting room or something and you have nothing to do, break something like this out. You know, just kind of touch up your skills here. And, and uh, it's just good reading material. So uh, good to have that. Uh, these two are the same. I'm only putting one of these in my bag, but I wanted to show you. Uh, I actually got this one at countycom.com. Uh, very reasonable price. It's a, basically just a waterproof container. I happen to keep Strike Anywhere matches in mine. And Strike Anywhere matches are great to have, but they're a lot harder to find. Um, the little white tip there, obviously with friction on something, it will light. Um, you don't need the striking pad, which is great because a lot of times when you have matches and the matches get wet, uh, even though you can dry the matches themselves out and use the matches, the striking pad, when that's wet, that's kind of shot. And that's uh, most important. So if you can find Strike Anywhere matches, buy them up while you can. I'm not sure where you can get them currently. Uh, there used to be a store that was going out of business, and I bought like four or five boxes of them, so I knew I would have them. But what's really cool about these, and this one this one here, the orange one I got at uh, Walmart, pretty much the same thing, a little bit longer. Uh, I think this is a dollar at Walmart, but uh, they were selling out, so I'm not sure if you guys... Your local Walmarts carry it still. But what's cool is I didn't even realize this until a couple weeks is that the bottom of these actually have a built-in, a glued uh, ferrocene rod. So just like your, you know, your uh, fire steels, same deal. You can take your, your edge of your uh, blade. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use the edge of your blade. Um, I would use the spine. But in some cases, you know, it's not going to work out properly. So you might have to use the, the bottom of your edge if your blade. If you have to use your blade to strike a fire steel, Use the very, very, very lowest point of your blade, okay, because it is going to dull it. Um, but anyway, if you can, I would use the spine. But in this case, this has kind of a rounded spine, so it's not going to work very well for striking. If I were to use this knife specifically with this, I would have to use the bottom of the base of the blade, as low as I can go. But there are built-in ferrocene rods, which are really cool. I actually never noticed that um, until recently, and they do work. They work fine. It's a very small piece, so you're only going to get maybe... I would guess maybe 50 or to 100 uh, strikes out of them before they're kind of useless because then they'll just be flush with the plastic here. But it's good to know. I mean, they are on there. So I'll carry one of these, probably just the green one. Um, again, just some spare matches. Um, something else here. This is actually kind of a cheap gimmicky item, but it works. And this is uh, made by Columbia Sportswear. Uh, I picked this up, I believe, eh, you know what, I don't really remember. <laughs> I think I got it online somewhere, but uh, it wasn't, I didn't purchase just this. I was, I, actually, I think I was buying a shirt somewhere, and I threw this on my order. It was like uh, $2 or $3. But basically, it has uh, three or four functions in it. Um, you have the compass. I like to have, if you carry a compass of any kind, carry two of them, at least two, if not three, because you want to compare them to make sure your compass is working. If your compass is broken, and you're lost, and you're in a serious situation where you need to be rescued, you need help, and it, like I said, it's a, you know it's an actual emergency, and your compass is broke. It, it may take you off into deeper and deeper into the woods and make make your whole situation worse off. So you have to have a backup compass to show that yes, your compass is working. Okay, if you have two compasses and one says north is that way and one says north is that way, you got a problem. So that's why I, I always say try to take three. If you could take compasses, try to take three of them, and. Um, I would definitely, definitely recommend that. So this has a compass in it, very simple compass. Um, it is a whistle, mainly. Uh, it also has a temperature reading on the back, which is just good to know, as well as a um, pull-out. It's kind of hard to get to. But it's a pull-out magnifying glass, which is good if, uh, I don't know, you're just exploring things. You want to look nice and close at something. Oh, by the way, since I'm here, I might as well show you this ferrocene rod. Doesn't work as good as my jeweler's loop. Oh, there we go. Made in China, of course. 
Uh, but anyway, uh, also another form of fire starting. Um, magnifying glasses to start fires are very good, but they are limited. You have to use them, obviously, when the sun's out, and you have to kind of practice with them to get good at it. But it is another form or another way to make fire, which is always good. So this is just a good little compact piece. Again, multi-purpose, a couple different things on here. Whistle works pretty well. By the way, when I blow the whistle for the video, the sound, it kind of like, it dulls the sound. So all my videos where I'm blowing a whistle, it doesn't sound loud. It is loud. It's just the, the uh, camera's not picking it up. Um, but anyway, good to have. Uh, now this, this is definitely a country thing. This is a simple snake bite kit. Uh, if you live in the city, you don't have to worry about snakes. Uh, where I live right now, even though it's kind of kind of rural, it's not too bad. We have a lot of uh, a lot of shops and stuff like that, but there's still there's snakes around. Um, this is more so for when I go to my grandfather's house. It's it's out there more, and I know and I've seen some poisonous snakes. I've seen water moccasin. I've seen rattling uh, rattlesnakes. So I do carry this just in case. All this really is, and I'll show you what it is. This pops off. It's just two rubber pieces. They just uh, you know kind of stick together like that. And what you have is this little kit inside. This part here actually creates a suction on um, this piece. And I don't want to go really into it, but basically you have this to create a suction to pull some of the poison out. You have basic instructions in here. Okay, which is going to tell you how to use the kit. Very simple. By the way, this brand is... Uh, Coglins, I guess that's how you pronounce that. Uh, also, um, purchased at Walmart, although this company is based in uh, Winnipeg, Canada. Uh, but anyway, you have a, a bottle of antiseptic, very strong, like uh, medical grade antiseptic. You would uh, break this or bend the tube and it would snap, and then all the antiseptic would go up here. It would soak into that patty and you use that to clean the area. Uh, and then you have a very simple, sterile razor blade in here, okay, to make an incision. So it's a very, very, very simple kit. Um, again, if you guys get these at Walmart or something, take the uh, package opening, uh, take the package out, read the instructions. So if you do get a snake bite, you don't have to sit there and read the instructions while you're waiting. This is something you kind of you want to do in advance and know how to use the kit. So again, if you have an emergency situation, you're not standing around trying to read the, you know, the instruction uh, booklet. You already know how to do it. So a very simple kit like that. Uh, again, not for everyone. If you don't have snakes in your area, it's not an issue whatsoever. Uh, it's a rare occasion where you're going to get bit by a snake, and even even then, it's even more rare that it's going to be poisonous. But it does happen, and this can save a life. Most important thing about snake bites is that if you get bit by a snake, try to, it, it, the best you can, see what the snake looked like, okay? Because there are tons of antivenoms. Uh, if you get to a hospital, it's not an issue whatsoever if you know what kind of snake bit you. Uh, the biggest problem is getting a snake bite and not knowing which snake bit you, you know, if it was poisonous, things like that. So I know, obviously, you're not, <laughs> you're not looking at the snake normally when you get bit. It's kind of a surprise. But if you can, try to, try to get a, a glimpse of it so you can tell the doctors, you know, what kind of snake it was. Uh, the last thing in this video are some water purification tablets. Again, available at Walmart. This happens to be Portable Aqua is the brand. Now, there's two bottles here. The one bottle are the actual purif uh, purification tablets, and there are 50 in here, and each tablet um, treats one quart or uh, a liter of water. So each bottle holds 50 tabs, and it's going to treat 50 liters okay, of water, which is plenty to survive for days and days. I mean, it's not, it's not a small amount of water, so the small bottle uh, does, does treat a lot of water. This actually treats the water. And this here, PA+, plus, this actually takes the iodine taste out of the water. Um, if you just treat it, you know, even when it's done, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to taste kind of like pool water. Not, not very good. Um, basically, I think, I think you put two tabs for every, or excuse me, I'm sorry. You put two tabs for every liter of water, okay? So being there's 50 tabs, it's going to treat 25 liters. So it's half of what I thought, or remembered anyway. Um, but that's still plenty of water. Uh, you know, if you're if you're literally lost somewhere, uh, I'm sure that'll last you a couple days, um, especially if you're sparing. But anyway, once you treat the water, I think you put two tabs in the uh, in the bottle or whatever container you have. You let it sit for half an hour, and then you put um, two tabs of this in there, and that's going to take the iodine taste out, so it tastes clean. It's not going to taste treated or you know kind of like chemicals. 
Um, so it's a good pair. This is not a necessity. You don't need this. However, if you're going to be sustaining yourself with uh, purified water, again, the taste is going to be quite bothersome for most people. So it's good to have both. Um, this also is something you'd probably want to um, replace after a certain amount of time. I mean, these are waterproof. I haven't opened these yet, so they are um, you know, sealed and everything, but I believe they do have a shelf life. Um, not a bad idea to, uh, to replace them after a long period of time. Actually, I don't see a shelf life you know, or a date or anything on them, but I probably would just in case. If you really you know, relied on them, uh, it would be important to have pills that are actually going to work for you. But anyway, just a form of purification. Um, to be honest, most times I bring my own water wherever I'm going. I don't, I don't venture into totally unknown territory where I'm going to rely on finding and drinking water. Uh, I just don't do that normally, so I don't really worry about a water purification system uh, as much as some people do. Some people go trekking uh, way out in the middle of nowhere, and they can't possibly bring all the water they're going to need. So they do need a uh, more specific, more efficient way of filtering and cleaning and treating their water. Uh, again, just not not a specific issue for me and what I do. When I do um, any kind, I don't really do trekking. I mean, whenever I do hiking and stuff like that, it's usually local. It's never too far, you know, into the unknown. Um, you know, so it's not a huge issue for me. But anyway, uh, these are all the items I'm adding to my Bob bag. Um, you know, I like to go into detail, so it ended up being a long video. But hopefully it was somewhat enjoyable. Maybe you learned a thing or two or got some ideas of stuff to add to your bag. I thank you very much for hanging in there and watching with me. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.